Action Comics 1064. That's right, folks. This is the first issue in the House of Brainiac storyline. A book I was hesitant to cover solely because, yeah, it's just another event. But you know what? Compared to some stuff I think is on the horizon, uh, in particular from the other company, this seems like it's going to be easy, and it, it it's just going to be about Superman. It seems like a distinctively Superman problem, so the books will say if in Superman, so you don't have to read a million tie-ins, you just get a nice, simple, easy story, which is kind of what you want. Because this first issue, I liked it. Uh, I think it sets up a couple of things. It doesn't really, like, explain itself. It's more just like, well, now there's a bunch of, you know, Zarnians here, and they're working with Brainiac, and, and that's fine. I don't need you to explain that. If there are references to those things in other books, which I know there are, like, in earlier issues of, like, Superman and stuff, we saw Brainiac doing things, working with Zarnians, so it's all fine. I think that's just completely okay. It's interesting. And, I don't know, I feel like it could explain itself better, but at the same time, it doesn't need to because it's kind of obvious what's going on. So I have no issue with that. It's really fun. It is really fun. You know, I do think this is kind of just like what we've needed for a Superman event. And I like the World World Saga enough. I do think there's some problems here and there. But I just think, like, just a standard, like, it's a classic character, he's wearing a classic costume, it's characters you know, like, that's kind of what we want. So Brainiac is headed to Earth. That's how the issue opens up. And then we just get a couple of pages, which are awesome, because Lois Lane has a day off, and she's just about to kick it and crank it, putting in some good tunes, playing the Pete Ross mixtape, Lois only, no Clarks allowed. So she's headed out to have some fun, walking through the streets of Metropolis. She says goodbye to the kids at the arcade, wishes Kara good luck on a date. We see that John Henry Irons is engaged to Lana Lang. I'm like, what? When did that happen? She's also Superwoman? I know I, I didn't read the Steelworks book. Maybe I should have, because that might have explained what's happening there. But that's kind of some uh, brand synergy of Superman and Lois, the TV series, because that John Henry Irons and that Lana Lang... They were flirty a bit. Did they make out? They might have kissed. I can't remember. But, you know, Lois is just chilling and having a good time. Everyone's being super nice to her, which they should be. Bibbo wants to give her a free lunch. She's like, I'll take you up on that. Lombard, Steve Lombard wants to, like, say she's looking hella fine, but she's like, screw off, dude. We see that Lex Luthor is, like, being transferred or something. I think, no, is he being released? It's, I guess he's being released. I thought he was just being like transferred to like the custody of Supercore, but it looks like he's being released, and he's going to be in the custody of like Lena and Miss Graves. So that's what's going on there. And then we see that on Lois's day off, she's actually headed to Centennial Park, where she's going to meet up with Jimmy and Saban, and they're going to do yoga. And you're like, that's what Lois Lane is going to do on her day off. She wants to do yoga in a park with like Jimmy. Which, I mean, sure. You know, like, recently in these books, she's been pretty good to Jimmy, so that's kind of fun. But also, Clark's going to meet him there, but he's a little busy because he's got, like, his morning workout to do. Flying over the ocean, seeing some dolphins, going to, like, a, a soccer game, high fives a kid in the crowd. It's pretty sick. He shows up for the yoga dressed like a goofball. I love it. I love it. He's got, like, a big sweater on. He's wearing really tight shorts, big headband. He looks like a goofy boy, and they're just like, this is silly and awesome. I'm having fun. But then all of a sudden, a bunch of, like, Brainiac robots and Zarnians show up to Metropolis to attack. And it becomes a Superman book once again. So then it's just a big Superman fight. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's all you need. There's aliens invading. I don't need you to give me a lot of, like, specific detail on that. People react to seeing the Zarnians like, I thought they were all dead. They're like, you'd think so, you bust stitches, but we alive. Yeah. And the Brainiac's just watching from his ship like, huh. Yeah, it's Brainiac time, everybody. I gotta go execute Phase 2, which is finding Lex Luthor because he's the smartest person on the planet. Supercorp gets attacked, and, like, the weird, like, projection that they made, or uh, not even projection, like, the holographic Lex LL01 that was made to, like, keep tabs on everything, the AI about Lex Luthor, suddenly morphed into Brainiac. It's like, ha, ah, yes, I bet you feel stupid, Lex Luthor, because everything that's happening is kind of your fault, which is kind of, like, the entire crux of this book. Everything comes back to Lex Luthor doing something stupid in another time. 
and everything that's happening. It's kind of connected to you, but you're an idiot, so get shit on. And then some Zarnians attack, and it's just a little bit more of a fight until we see people start getting, like, sucked up in jars and, like, sent back onto Brainiac's ship. It happens to Mercy. It happens to Lena. Lex has left to deal with his shit. He kind of, like, has a special watch that gives him, like, an energy-projected power suit that he uses to, like, beat his way out. But he crashes through the window, and he kind of, like, joins the fight with Superman on the ground. It's like, I don't know what's going on. Clearly, Brainiac is doing something. We should stop him. More of the super family are getting taken into, like, these weird jars. Kara gets taken. Keenan and Connor get taken. The kids get taken. What are their names? Ortho and Oslo? Oslo and Ortho? Oslo and Ortho? Something like that. Orko and Snarf. Yeah, there you go. They get taken. Superman's kind of, like, alone now. Fights some of them. Silver Banshee comes to help. She gets taken by them, too. And we see that Superman's just losing. He's getting beat up and all of like the other super powered people in the area are getting taken too like parasites getting taken lana lang superwoman's getting taken everyone's kind of like going away at the moment and you're like "Uh uh-oh and that is when who is it it's general what's his name here general shakal he's like what if and hear me out folks what if lobo wasn't a fucking insane person What if there was, like, an Omni-Man Lobo who's just like, I ain't no crazy son of a bitch, you know? I ain't Hulk Hogan in this shit. I'm the Undertaker, and I'm gonna break your fucking eyes. He's like, dang, I thought this would go a lot smoother, but that Geekwad Lobo you fought, I ain't like him. So Chikal's just gonna, like, beat up on Superman. I'm gonna shoot him with, like, the jar gun that captures everybody when Lex steps in and gets captured instead of Superman. He's like, You're the only person that could save this, so save it, Superman. You're our only hope. And that is when Chakal's like, well, the main man ain't gonna be too happy about this. The boss ain't gonna like me taking the bald one. Superman blasts into the sky, looking to find where Brainiac's ship went. But it it teleports out. They've captured all the super family. Uh Uh-oh, that ain't good. But there's still some people alive. Now, we specifically say it's super-powered characters. Because Steel and... Well, both Steels, I guess, are still there. Jimmy is still there, so it's not like the extended Superman family. It's just people of Kryptonian heritage and with Superman-adjacent powers or villains of Superman. So the Brainiacs captured the kids, and Clark gets so pissed off, he's got to go find Lobo and figure out what the main man has to do with any of this, because he might be able to help them. And then you see the final page is like, Superman will come for us now, and we will be ready. And it's just like, a bunch of different Brainiacs, different interpretations of Brainiac. There's the robotic one that's kind of there. There's like a weird Cthulhu looking ass over there. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, the thing that this book's also setting up is like the female Brainiac, like the lady Brainiac, because this whole page at the end is just a bunch of dudes. So I feel like there's going to be like a queen Brainiac that shows up like, yes, you're all useless compared to me. Brainiac, shut up. It's time for a woman to take charge. And I'm I'm all for that. This issue is really fun because it's just a straight up alien invasion story with a bunch of like the modern continuity for Superman. Rafa Sandoval does some incredible artwork here. Alejandro Sanchez does the colors. It looks awesome. It looks really sick. It's a fun book. It is a fun book. And I was very worried about that because we got some events coming up very soon that I'm very worried about. So just having one that's actually decent and isn't bad or annoying or loud, that's a really, really cool feeling. I'm kind of really happy with that existing. Makes me smile. Makes me feel good. So, Action Comics issued 1064, part one of House of Brainiac. I am going to give an 8 out of 10. I think I'm going to be doing the whole book now. So stay tuned. Thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.